In this talk, I will present my CPP paper on a minimalistic verified bootstrap compiler. As the title suggests, this paper is about bootstrapping a compiler inside of an ITP. At this point, someone might say, hang on, hasn't that already been done in the KML project? Indeed it has, but KML has as, an, has as a name to produce a realistic verified compiler and as a result, some of the key ideas are obscured by clutter by, of realism. The contribution of this work is to provide a clean and clear presentation of the idea behind compiler bootstrapping inside an ITP. This, this talk has a simple structure. I'll answer the questions why, what and how. We start with the question why. Why would one bootstrap a compiler inside an ITP? To answer this, Consider this scenario. Hooray! We've finished our verified compiler. Um, how do we get an executable version that can run outside of an ITP? Two ways come to mind. One can use the ITP's code extraction mechanism, or one can, one can alternatively bootstrap the compiler within the ITP. This talk will look at the second option. Why does bootstrapping help us? Well, bootstrapping results in a theorem of the following form. This executable assembly code implements the compiler. By bootstrapping a compiler inside an ITP, we arrive at a theorem containing the executable implementation of the compiler. OK, next question is then, what? What is compiler bootstrapping exactly? Well, let's start from a compiler. A compiler is a program that transforms source code into executable code. Bootstrapping then? We say that a compiler bootstraps itself when it can generate its own low-level implementation by applying itself to its own source code. The idea can be illustrated as follows. The idea is to feed the compiler in a source code, run the compiler as normal, to get an implementation of the compiler as executable code. And we want to do all of this inside an ITP with proof. The next question is then, how? How can we bootstrap a compiler inside an ITP? Well, let's think of what we need. We clearly need a compiler implementation. We need semantics for source and for target languages. And we need a verified code generator. OK, so let's get started. Implementation. Here's the top level function implementing an end to end compiler. The sub functions are Alexa that turns a string into a list of tokens, a parser that turns a list of tokens into a source program prog. Then we have a code generator, which given a source program turns and uh, returns an assembly program. Finally, the asm to string function converts the assembly program into concrete syntax that an off-the-shelf assembler will understand. Moving on to the semantics. For the source semantics, we have a judgment which is to be understood as follows. Give an input called input on standard in. Program P will terminate and produce output called output on standard out. For the target semantics, we have a similar judgment with a similar meaning. Note that the subscript prog and asm indicate which semantics we are talking about. Equipped with a semantics judgment for source and target, we can state what it means for our code gen function to be correct. This theorem can be read as saying, if both source and, uh, uh, and generated assembly code terminate, then they produce exactly the same output. There are other more general ways of phrasing compiler correctness but this simple statement will do for our purposes here. So getting back to what we need, it looks like we have all these now. Let's attempt to bootstrap the compiler. Remember, bootstrapping is applying the code generator to the compiler itself. Let's do it. At this point, someone will say, stop, the types don't make any sense. And indeed, applying the code generator directly to the compiler does not work because there is a type mismatch. So how do we get around this? Well, there's a trick. 
Let's invent a prog represent, uh, representation of the compiler. This prog value called compiler prog needs to be such that the following holds. For any input called input, compiler prog will terminate and produce the same output as, output as the compiler function applied to input. One should view this theorem as the correctness of compiler prog. It relates compiler, the function, with compiler prog. Now we have all the parts we need. We have the correctness of compiler prog, we have the correctness of the code generator, and a definition of com the compiler as assembly code. From these, it is easy to prove the final correct a bootstrap theorem. As you can see, the fol this follows by modus ponens of the top two theorems on this slide. Let's have a look at what they, uh, the bootstrap theorem says. If for input, the assembly produces some output called output, then that output is the compiler function's output. In other words, the assembly implementation of the compiler, that is compiler asm, behaves like the compiler function. The next step is that we want to get our hands on the assembly code. To do this, we simply evaluate inside the ITP asm, asm tuster applied to compiler asm. An excerpt of the result of this evaluation is shown on the right hand side. Looking back at the parts that we need, we can see that a verified source code version of the compiler implementation was added to the list. We also needed evaluation of ASM to STR applied to compiler ASM. With this, the bootstrapping is done. <clears throat> this requirement of a source code version of the compiler implementation steered uh, our design of the source language and compiler definition in this paper, a minimal verified bootstrap compiler. The rest of this talk will be about the details. So I will, uh, for the rest of this talk, I'll briefly describe the design of each piece of the formal development. We start with the source language. The source language was designed with minimality in mind. It should be just large enough to conveniently express a compiler implementation. I decided on a small Lisp language where values are binary trees with natural numbers at the leaves. The source AST is straightforward. A program consists of a list of function declarations followed by a main expression. It is worth noting that this language lacks function values. Each function call must be to a concrete function name. The semantics of evaluating a whole program is defined in terms of expression evaluation. Expression evaluation is defined as a standard big step semantics. The const expression produces a natural number. The var expression fetches a value from the environment. A primitive operations are described by the final rule on this slide. Uh, the semantics of primitives is defined in terms of eval op. Here we see the semantics of cons, which performs allocation, uh, and of head and tail, which per perform op projections, and div, which is division over natural numbers. Okay, moving on to the target language. Our target is x86-64 assembly. In our formalization, an assembly program is a list of assembly instructions. Note that this is a very small subset of the x86-64 uh, uh, assembly language. We give a semantics to this language using a small step relation. The relation has the following type. And here is an example rule. This rule describes the const function. If a const instruction can be fetched from memory, then assign w to register r and increment the program counter. W and R are from the instruction then. The top level semantic judgment relates and uh, relates input and assembly program with an output. If there is a way to take some number of step uh, transitions from a good initial state 
to a final hold state such that the output is produced. Moving on to the code generator. The code generator is a functional program. It takes source AST as input and produces a list of assembly instructions as output. Here we see uh, the, how the op expression is compiled and then how that how add within op is compiled and what the code for c add for add is let's move on to the construction of compiler proc for the bootstrap we needed a definition of compiler proc and the following theorem about it to save, to save manual effort proof producing code synthesis is used for this this proof producing tool pr proves theorems of the following form. Given an input term, it picks an appropriate function for mapping this term into Lisp values and generates a Lisp expression that satisfies this term. The next slide describes part of the paper's part of one of the paper's examples. Let's consider the following definition of the even function. First off, we need a mapping from booleans into Lisp values. We decide on representing true as 1 and false as 0. Next, we manually, manually prove a few theorems that the tool can use during operation. Here's a theorem describing how it can produce code for the constant true, written capital T. And here is a lemma that the proof automation can use to generate verified code implementing boolean negation. Given some correct implementation of x of boolean expression b, then 1 minus that expression is an implementation of boolean negation. From these, we can immediately derive verified code for computing not true. I will not go into more detail here now and refer to the paper for a more interesting example. Let's move on to an amusing extra. We have a function that converts a source AST into readable concrete syntax. <clears throat> For this function, we have proved that lexing and then parsing its output returns the original AST. With this prog to stir function, we can define a readable text version of compiler prog, which goes nicely with the other representations that we already have for compiler proc, namely the assembly representation and the string version of the assembly representation. From the property about proc to stir and the definition of compiler, it is easy to prove the following, which is a reassuring but actually unnecessary result. Finally, let's run the bootstrap compiler outside of the logic. Before we run the verified assembly, here is a quick reminder about what we expect it to do. When we run the, uh, uh, the assembly, it should produce as output on standard out the output of the compiler, so the assembly of that it produced for that input. Uh, and when we run the compiler outside, what we actually use is the the asm to string version of compiler asm okay so what is in this dot 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 here so let's run the compiler then so let's first look at compiler asm in a text file so here it is in the system as a text file to be able to use this we will assemble and link it using gcc so here we give it as input to gcc and here I'll show you a, a, a source file that I've produced from before. So this is a hello prog. Um, uh, this is a, a hello world, world program. I give it to the compiler and pipe the result into hello.s. Again, use GCC to assemble and link this and produce an executable called hello. When this is run, it says hello. And now let's have a look at the compiler prog, but as source syntax, concrete syntax. 
This is a generated uh, text, although it is quite readable. And at the bottom you can see the top level compiler. So, now let's compile the compiler. We can pipe in the compiler implementation into our compiler and pipe out the result into a file called result. Now I'm checking the difference between result and the original compiler asm.s and find that there is no difference. Even though this is quite a long file which uh, word count will show. More than 10,000 lines. And that's the demo. Uh, you can try it out yourself. Uh, download it, build the scripts and then run it yourself. Okay, so uh, that brings this talk to a conclusion. So this talk has described how a simple compiler can be bootstrapped inside an ITP. You can read more about it in this uh, CPP paper. So if you have questions or comments, send me an email. Thank you very much.